I want to preface this by saying that you have to watch the full podcast episode that I had with Emilio. We were vibing back and forth. There was a lot of energy involved and we were covering a multitude of topics. One of the topics that came up was, of course, Pavel's Simple and Sinister. Because you have to understand, when you have a long conversation about kettlebells, it's almost impossible to avoid that Pavel's name comes up. And Simple and Sinister is one of the most popular kettlebell workouts out there. Now, Emilio had some great thoughts and I responded and we had a great discussion. Now, one of the things that came to mind after the conversation was that the Turkish getup might give you some additional straight arm strength and it might help you to stand up when you're on the floor and you are in a martial artist setting or in a BJJ or MMA setting. Other than that, I think Emilio and I shared a similar perspective about simple and sinister and the getup. Enjoy. So if I say like, okay, I hate the Turkish getup, like, what do you think? I would, I can't stand I would, it. I yeah, really can't stand it. Yeah, I understand it because here's the thing: it, with my coaching practice, I never do it. You don't do it exactly. Nobody does it. Do you do it in your training? Like for, for like in my say, training? Like, yes, yes, yes. For fun. Not like it's a significant part. For, for say that again. For what? For fun. Exactly. It's not a significant part. Never. Never, exactly. never was, never is. And here's the and thing. This is, I, I do get into it, arguments about this. <laughs> with, with my clients, with the getup, we, here's the thing. And that's what sometimes people don't understand who don't train. Or like you, you said it so beautifully, you don't do this professionally. And I don't want to brag. This is just, this is my job. So if I have people coming in and, you know, my, uh, my uh, average age is 48 years of age, right? Yeah, and I said, I train, yeah, I train people who never... Yeah, I train people who never touched weights in their life. Right. And they pay they pay a, a lot of money in our in our you gym. Just, if you want my time, time well. Yes. If you want my time, you have to pay a lot of money. So if you pay a lot of money for my time, I have to make the most out of your time. I have to give you yes. the biggest return on your investment and get the most bang for your buck exercises. A Turkish get up is not a most bang for your buck exercise because it takes way too much time to learn. And here's the thing. Even if we do it, it's always going to be a little bit sloppy, which I don't care, right? They never, they, nobody, nobody uses a 32 kg. They don't have to. But here's another thing. It takes way too much space in the coaching realm. Yes, so I'm saying, does. you know what? Let's just do some swings. Let's just do some farmer's walks. I have a prowler. Let's do some, uh, let's do some cleans. Let's do some presses. Right. Let's use some dumbbells, right? And when we do a get up. I also say let's get up, but not, a, not even Turkish get up. Just get up. Just get up. Yeah, that's another I'll, I'll thing. It's great. Yeah. yeah, and for some people, it's great to lay on the backs and then stand up and then just do, you know, do a get up in that case without any weights. But here's another case. Uh, here's another thing. We work with clients who are 70 plus. And yeah, we have too. some clients. We have some clients who have a neck like this, right? Right. So they cannot lay on their backs because if they lay yeah. on their backs, it starts hurting. They, yeah, they, they start doing this and they have pain. What do you think? Right. I'm going to do a get up with these people? And of, no, course, of course, not. of course, you can tell me, yeah, but, but you have to work on this mobility. Bro, this person never, for the last 60 years, never trained. Exactly. And now they start moving. Guess what? Right. I'm going to give them the most suitable exercises. And there will, yes. and there's something that I've realized in coaching. There are some um, biomech, bi let's call it like this biomechanical deficiencies that you will be never able to cure some yeah. people will have this some people will have this or there's it's, no point in fixing it you can mobilize it a little bit for example one client well uh, it's such a great example one client sure, he, sure. he walks around like this right okay that's pretty and, extreme yeah. yeah very extreme so what we yeah. do is in the mobility we do this yeah right? yeah yeah and that's and, mobility work yeah and and what is the first time he did it? He looked like this. Right. He didn't oh, wow. know. You, you didn't see the shaking, right? But he didn't know how to uh, communicate to these muscles because he never right. used them. Right. Right. And right. now, right. and now it's a little bit better, but he always have a certain rounded back. So it, right. I, I'm not going to cure it. Right. It's just fact. Right. Yes. And and like even and, like so consider. Sorry, no, no. You were gonna say something. You say yeah, something. yeah. And and that's and just my final thoughts about the get up. And so, the a get up is a great exercise. If you love it, do it. But, it is an exercise where you keep a weight elevated over your head and you stand up. Great. From my yeah. perspective, some swings, some presses, some squats are a better option.
I 100% agree. And I think even more than that, like a lot of people that talk about the get up and, and by the way, if you don't want to hyper specialize in a certain movement, I just love talking about this stuff. It's fun. Yeah, yeah do it, do it, do it. But, uh, yeah, I love, I love it. it. But like, so for instance, and I, sometimes I guess I like bragging. I'll just, I guess I do. Do it, like, do I, it, I've do done it. Time, I've done time sinister. I did time sinister like wow. two weeks ago. 48 kg, yeah. Yep, exactly. Well, actually, forty nine, because <laughs> my, my bell is messed up. Yeah, my bell is messed up. <laughs> my bell still. is messed up. Love it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it was, maybe it was my other one. Whatever, forty eight, okay. forty nine, whichever it was. Whatever it is. Um, I passed time sinister. I have it on video. I could literally send it to you. Awesome. I do not do Turkish get up. I do not do one arm swings. I do clean and press with the bells. I do one arm snatch with the bells. I do double snatch with the bells. I do long and short cycle with the bells, Great. and I do rows. Right. Great. I also deadlift. I do a lot of aerobic conditioning. I do strongman stuff. My general physical preparation brought me to the point where I was able to do sinister, right? Where I there was able go. to get up off the floor without practicing it with a 48 or 49 kilogram there over my go. head 10 go. times, right? Within that, within that sphere of, so like, it's one of those things. And this is something that I tell the people actually talking about the Reddit on the Reddit all the time, where they'll be like, should I do simple and sinister? This is why I know I like talking about, it's funny. Like they'll be like, should I do simple and sinister? And I'm like, is your goal to get bigger? No, you shouldn't do simple and sinister. Is your goal to get more fit? No, you shouldn't do simple and sinister. Is your goal to get better at simple and sinister? Yes, go ahead, do simple and sinister, right? Like, because it's not, the one arm swing and the get up are not for hypertrophy. They're not yeah. gonna get no. you like super, super no. fit. They're gonna get yeah. you okay. And that's, once yeah. again, okay is okay. If, that, if you wanna do that, that's great. And I love you for that and I respect you and 100%. I wish you the best for your family and your friends. 100%. But at the end of the day, <laughs> Like you are going to have a better time probably with your training. And also in terms of your physique, your muscularity, if you do a long cycle, if you do clean and press, if you do front squats, some thrusters, some rows, that is how it works. One hundred right? percent agree. Here's the thing about uh, great that you're mentioning about uh, simple and sinister, because here's the thing. These are simple and sinister is my best performing video on, on YouTube. Which one, which uh, uh, you've talked the, about it a few times. So. The, fo the follow along where I do it in the follow along. Oh, where you do it, the 100. I do, I do two hand swing and, uh, and the get up. And yeah. you know how many people say it's one arm. It's not two arm, two arm, or it's one hand, right. not two hand. I don't care. It's just a swing. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a swing. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, we can, we can argue that if you swing with one side, of course, there are some forces at play that the rotational aspect. Okay. Yes. But there's not a major difference. Just swing, just swing. Right. So the idea behind this this workout was, as far as I remember, it was a different setup. I, I think it was something different. On and the then program the you're talking about the snatches. The programming. The That's what of it the, used to be. I think it was something different. Yeah, 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 yeah. But here's the thing. I like what you're saying. If you love simple and sinister, and you aren't in decent shape, and you just discover kettlebells, go for it. It's gonna Please. bring you. It's gonna right. improve your shape most definitely. But at some point, you have to open up, open yourselves up for the big, most bang for your buck exercises: squat, press, row, yes. deadlift, carries, walks. And why are these exercises around for so long? And you know where the get up comes from? Uh, oh man, I, I feel like it was like a Turkish or like it was like a shield thing, right? You would like get up or something like that. Or are you talking about Mark Chang, the history with him? Where he would no, no, I, you know, there's probably many histories around it, but it comes from a guy named uh, Vos. That's his na last name, at least as far as we can trace it to this documented history from the strongman guys. And by the way, please read the book, The Kings of Strength by Edmond Debonet. Oh yeah, I would love that type of thing. That's so cool. This is Edmond Debonet was a historian. He was a f he was fascinated with physical culture around the in the in the in the 19th century and he wrote about all these strongman guys these guys who performed these lifts were like crazy and by the way kettlebells come from this type of realm from the strongman yeah, guys yeah, yeah. right yeah 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 i know it's yeah. fascinating so um you have Voss who came up with a circus feat because the strongman back in the day were strong guys who wanted to make a living off of lifting weights, so they were performing in circuses or acts. Yeah, like doing cool shit. Yeah. Doing cool and crazy stuff, right? So this one guy named Voss, he was doing a get up with a barbell and with heavy weights. And beneath him, he had uh, knives. It would, it's a great, there, there's an image in, in the book. I can't find it. It <laughs> would take too long. But the idea was if he would miss the get up or the weight would drop he would down, he would, he would die. Yeah, yeah, something like this, right? So this is where the get up comes from. Now here's the next thing that you have to do. Clean and press that like button. Share it with a friend who's also interested in kettlebells. And then check out this video.
This is the simple and sinister workout that we did in the follow along format. Because now you may be thinking, hey, I want to check out this workout. Well, your boy can help you out. So check it out right here. 